What's up guys? We are out in the desert today. I just wanted to go take a lunch break in the desert. So we are out today. I wanted to show you guys my KLR and then take you along for a ride. But first, hopefully you can see this. This is just a place I have the pleasure of only being like an hour away from. Here she is. So I guess I lost my blinker cover, but we have full LEDs all around the bike. Uh, the blinkers, brake light, everything in the dash, everything's LED. And then we have the Tusk rear rack. You put my bags on there and go camping. Um, a Delvic exhaust, that was just, I mean, it was one of the cheaper ones I could find. So I kind of picked it for that reason. And it, I think it sounds great. Um, stainless steel brake lines gaffer what else the thermo bob up in here we got that gold boy the thermo bob that bypasses some coolant and stuff what else we got some hand guards nice sturdy aluminum some crash bars we got a skid plate i think the skid plate and the crash bars are both sw motec moving up front we got some ox lights um, there's Dunlap D606 tires on the front and the rear. We got our stainless steel brake lines, crash bar, Tusk shifter lever because I bent my other one. Um, the seat is a sergeant seat. Then we have our dash. So this is the KLR dash. And this switch over here is, comes on, it powers the whole dash. So it doesn't have switched power, it's just on or off. And then I have the lights over here for the aux lights, um, voltage meter, two USB ports, and then the switch is to bypass the clutch switch and the side stand switch. I've been having some issues with that lately. I made a video on that, that should come out soon, but we got my beautiful Nemo Saurus sticker here. It's got 14,000 miles and it's been real good to me. So guys, I love this bike. I think it can be summed up by saying it won't go anywhere fast, but it will go everywhere. And that's been my experience with this. I've taken it some gnarly places and it's always, it's always been up for the task. Every time I've crashed it or done something stupid and it, like it didn't make it up an obstacle, like a failed attempt, it would usually be my fault. I don't think I can blame the bike for any of that. I think it's better than me at a lot of this shit. This bike has basically been the same since the 80s, so you can find parts for it all over the world, anywhere you need to go. Most junkyards have at least a couple KLRs in them. This bike is still carbureted, so that could be a good or a bad thing to you, depending on what kind of person you are. It does what I want to do. I wanted to start getting into like the adventure riding and motorcycle camping and try that out. But that stuff is so expensive. Like you want one of those BMW GSs? No, those are stupid. They're super heavy, way too expensive. You'd feel like a douchebag if you dropped it. So I got me this. It was less than $3,000. I've put probably three to $400 worth of parts on it. Um, kind of spiff it up and it has been good to me Reckon sack wash I ran over a snake here once just slithered out and I hit it it was terrifying Love this bike. Woo. Mm. 
You see, would you rather be like in a Jeep or? <laughs> would you rather be in a Jeep or just doing that? <laughs> Anyways, I think that, I don't know, hopefully that comes out fun on camera. But I think that all just speaks to itself. I mean, this bike is a ton of fun. That tractor power. So I wanted to check this out. There's a little lookout up here and you can tell how burnt all that is. I just want to go take a look. Ooh. So that that is really, really depressing. Just seeing all this burnt ground. Um, I'm excited to watch this all grow back, I guess. We can come check on it every now and then. But yeah, so the cons of this bike, I mean, it's ugly, one. It's not, it's not a good looking bike. I don't know why they, mine's the Gen 2. I think Gen 1 looked better, but whatever. They made it all bulbous. Then there's the fact that it's a 650 and it makes very little power. It doesn't have a sixth gear, so it's very uncomfortable above like 75 miles an hour. Sometimes even 75 is sketchy. Um, the bars kind of do this the whole time. I'll show you when we're on the highway. You know, apparently it burns a little bit of fuel or oil. So this is the second bike I've owned. Um, my first bike was an SV650S, the more sporty edition with the clip-on handlebars and the full fairing. But it was an SV650. That was a great bike too. I loved that thing, but I was always looking down the dirt roads. Every single time I wanted to like go for a nice ride through these pretty areas. And here in Arizona, there's a lot of dirt roads that'll take you to some cool places. And I wanted to go explore those too. And I tried, and I, I went down some real easy dirt on the SV, but it just, you know, it didn't like it. It was uncomfortable. On this, I, I mean, I can go four times faster. It's fun. So I sold the SV650, which was my first bike, and then I started looking for a bike that would take me off-road. And then I have this buddy that wanted to go on a moto camping trip. So I said, yeah, I'll rent a bike and we can go. Do you know where I can rent one? And he told me about this app, or this website, I guess. It's not on your phone. Um, it's called Riders Share. It's like Airbnb for motorcycles. It kind of, it was all right. So I go to this guy from like down the street from my house, pick up a motorcycle from him. They handle all the money on the app, but or on the site. But I told him like before I rented it, I'm gonna be taking this and doing some, like we're gonna take it on these trails. It's the Arizona BDR, the back road discovery route. And we wanted to do like two legs of that in a weekend. And he's like, yeah, that's cool. That's what I wanna do with it. And or he said that's what it's there for, or something like that, implying that this bike had been through some shit and gone down some dusty roads. So when I go pick it up, it had about 800 miles on it. And then when I brought it back to him, it had about 1,200 hard miles on it. So I never dropped that bike once on that trip. We rode through some gnarly stuff. I don't know how I didn't drop it. Honestly, I mean, it was somebody else's brand new motorcycle and I was riding off road for pretty much the first time. After that trip, I was pretty much sold on getting myself a KLR 650 as my next bike. And eventually I found one, it was this one. It already had half of the stuff done to it. Um, I just did a couple more things and now it's great for me. So now we just have to ask, is it the best adventure bike? No. Is it the best adventure bike off-road? No. Is it the best adventure bike on-road? Absolutely not. Is it even an adventure bike? Nobody knows. But is it a good choice for under $3,000? Hell yeah. So let's go take it on the freeway and then I'll sign off. So there we are at 90. 
Top Gear. Kiss it. Come on, kiss it. Yeah, we did it. Oh my god. Wobbly girl. So to conclude all of that, I guess this bike is for people that don't want to spend a lot of money, don't want anything that's really nice, want something that just works pretty much the bare minimum and kind of kicks ass at the same time. I don't know. So that's going to be it for this one, my friends. See you on the next one.